I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to give you a a, a short uh, summary of the superficial geology of Wayne uh, and how the materials that we see today got to the air in the first place. And we can thank the glacier for many of them, all the sand and gravel, clay, hard pan, all laid down by glacial ice, uh, which last covered uh, most of Canada yeah, and Northern United States around 21,000 years ago, and finally departed from Wayne around 15,000 years ago, give or take a few. And uh, the glacier left behind uh, uh, a wide variety of, of uh, soil materials, some of which are important natural resources, especially sand and gravel. Sand and gravel is uh, widely used for construction aggregate. Uh, it, it is important as a medium for transporting groundwater in sand and gravel aquifers. Uh, it's very good for building sites because it's easy to excavate. Uh, and there are many other uses of, of gravelly sediments that washed out of the glacier when it melted. Uh, gravel, uh, gravel uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, contains a lot of groundwater. And uh, uh, if you have a very coarse gravel, it can store and transmit huge volumes of groundwater uh, and become important as an aquifer. Uh, and this is a, a gravel aquifer site. I think it's up in Dallas Plantation. It's the Poland Spring uh, well in uh, midway between Rangeley and Stratton. And this is just one of uh, uh, many uh, uh, wells that Poland Spring has around the state and from which they derive uh, uh, their water. Uh, so what I have done for years and years uh, for the Maine, the state of Maine, uh, as well as uh, New Hampshire and Connecticut, uh, uh, I've made a career out of mapping and researching the surficial earth materials. And uh, uh, from 1975 until I retired in 2014, I did this work for the state of Maine. Uh, and uh, I produced maps like the one you see here. This is a surficial geology map uh, of what is called the Wayne Quadrangle. Uh, it's a one to 24,000 scale map. It doesn't cover all of Wayne, but the, uh, it covers most of it. Uh, and you can see uh, Androscoggin Lake, uh, uh, Bocasset Lake, other water bodies in the area. The green uh, is a glacial till, which covers most of the Wayne, most of the town of Wayne. Uh, the bright uh, red uh, and dark pink areas uh, in the southwest part and uh, up along Fairbanks Road uh, are sand and gravel of glacial origin. Uh, the orange color uh, over in the west and northwest side of town is windblown sand as in the desert of Wayne. And there are other units here, uh, floodplains, wetlands, which I'll, I won't go into in much detail this time. And all of that is under, underlain by bedrock. This bedrock under everything in the state of Maine and, and in fact, under everything in the world. And uh, uh, the bedrock in Maine has been sculpted uh, by glacial ice flowing over it. Uh, let this outcrop that you see has been not, has been sculpted, polished, and even grooved by the action of, of gravel being dragged over the surface of the rock at the bottom of the glacier. Uh, I'm going to show you examples from uh, towns all over southwestern Maine simply because there aren't enough fresh exposures to show you these things in Wayne. But but what I'm going to show you here are different kinds of earth materials which are present uh, in the town. Um, till is the rocky dirt debris that just melts out of a glacier and, and drops right to the surface of the ground without any subsequent reworking by, uh, by stream waters. Uh, so this is the Athabasca Glacier and the Adrian Rockies. And in the foreground, in front of the glacier, you see 
moldry till that was quite literally deposited in the last few years. So if you take away that glacier, uh, what you're left with is uh, much the same material we see covering the, the hillsides and mountaintops around Wayne. Uh, very stony, a mishmash of uh, all different sizes of ground up rock debris that dropped out of the glacier. Uh, this is an actual till exposure over in Jefferson. Um, it's not particularly stratified. Uh, it's just a, 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 a conglomeration of uh, silt, clay, sand, and rocks. And this kind of till you see here is what we commonly refer to as hard pan. It's not easy to dig. Uh, sometimes it's so tight you almost have to blast it out. Uh, and this, uh, it does not readily transmit uh, groundwater uh, or other liquids such as uh, uh, waste from a, a leach field. On the other hand, uh, much of the till is sandy and quite loose and easy to dig. Uh, here's an example over in Albany, Maine. Uh, this particular example has a lot of big boulders in it. Uh, uh, which is perhaps uh, not ideal, but in general, uh, sandy till is a, is a fairly good medium for uh, septic system uh, leach fields because uh, the effluent will seep down through it slowly, receiving a degree of natural treatment from the, uh, the mineral particles in the till. Uh, and uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't move through the ground too fast, but, but on the other hand, it doesn't puddle up the surface. So uh, many times people have tried to situate their leach fields on uh, a sandy, moderately well-drained till. I think it's one of the best materials in town for uh, a system of that sort. However, you wanna make sure that the till is thick enough. Uh, this is a road cut up in Route 17, north of Rumford and uh, uh, if you were just standing on the surface of the ground, you say, well, I'm sitting on glacial till, that's good. But then you dig a hole and you'll find it four or five feet down, you're in a solid ledge as this road cut clearly shows. Another factor to consider in Southern Maine is that uh, we were under the ocean. Uh, most, uh, most of Wayne was under the ocean as the glacier left because the land had been pushed down with a great weight of the glacier. And as the, as the glacier receded, the ocean came right in against the front of the ice for a time until the land rose back up to where it is today. So down in the Penobscot Bay area where I took this picture, the, uh, sea, the relative sea level right after the glacier left was almost 300 feet higher than today. And the same is true all over much of the Southern Maine. That dark blue line that you see snaking across Central Maine, that was as far inland as the ocean got in low-lying areas, particularly river valleys uh, and the lowlands along the Maine coast. And the lilac colored unit that you see in this map uh, uh, is an area or our areas where you find a lot of thick clay deposits, marine clay deposits. And we have some of that in Wayne too. Uh, another thing that we have in Wayne uh, are these moraine ridges as they're called that where uh, till and rocks were heaped up at the edge of the glacier and during the winter time. So this moraine in the upper right is the oldest one. And then the middle one is a little bit younger, one year younger probably. And the one in the lower left is another year younger still. Uh, and we have a number, of, a number of these moraines here in Wayne. In fact, I live in one on Lord Road. If you drive uh, down Lord Road on the east side of Gasset Lake, uh, you will, the road will rise up over uh, several of these lower ridges, uh, like, like the ridge where this house is situated in Newcastle. And, uh, uh, these moraines uh, are well-drained, uh, usually quite permeable because they're composed of either sandy till or in some cases, outright sand and gravel. Uh, most of them are, are 
tend to be till. And if you don't see any boulders, it's usually because the farmers uh, cleared them away in years past. So in the example shown here, uh, when that field was cleared long ago, the boulders were removed. So that's glacial till up on, the, up on that ridge. And then down in the foreground, you have moist uh, marine clay, uh, not as well drained. Uh, and and uh, the clay tends to hold the moisture and it's very good for, for uh, growing grass and, and crops. Um, there are literally thousands of moraines across southern Maine, uh, as seen in this LIDAR image of the Wallaboro, Wallaboro area. Uh, this is, I'm not sure if you've seen LIDAR before, but it's a fairly new imaging technology uh, done by flying over the land, uh, shooting laser beams down at the land surface, and then recording them when they bounce back up. And it produces uh, uh, an image like you see here, uh, which is very, very detailed. It basically takes away the trees. It sees right through the trees. Uh, so this is bare earth LIDAR. Very good if you're mapping geology because you, you don't have to worry about the trees getting in the way. And those little lines is east-west uh, skinny little ridges that you see crisscrossing this area, which is many miles across. Those are all glacial moraines. Um, as the glacier withdrew, a lot of water flowed through tunnels beneath the ice. And over time, those tunnels got clogged with the gravel. They, they would fill up with gravel and sometimes a lot of sand too. So that when the glacier was gone, uh, that tunnel filling is left is what we call an esker. It's a gravel stand ridge, like you see here over in Waterford. Uh, if you want to see an esker forming today, you can go to the Athabasca Glacier. You can see the, the water coming right out from a tunnel in the ice. And in the, uh, uh, the two slides on the right are before and after pictures from a modern day glacier in Arctic Canada. Uh, the top picture uh, is the older one. You can see the water blasting out of the tunnel at the front of the glacier. The lower picture was taken just a few years later. The ice is retreated, and uh, there's all that gravel that was left in the ice tunnel. And here's the same kind of feature, uh, much older here in Maine. Uh, is, so it's called an esker. They usually occur in valley bottoms, and uh, we have an esker that runs down along the Fairbanks Road in Wayne. There's also another esker in the uh, over in Leeds, I think it is, the southwestern part of the Wayne map area. Uh, these are uh, very valuable as gravel sources. They also store a lot of water uh, at depth of, for sand and gravel aquifers. And quite often they will be flanked as they are along the Fairbanks Road by a lot of overlying uh, sand. And that sand just washed out of the Melt of the glacier, like you see in this cartoon version in Alaska, the glacier is terminating in the ocean, just like it did in Wayne. And there are tunnels coming out of the ice and spreading sand uh, is a fan-shaped accumulation on the ocean floor. So flash forward, and uh, here is a, is a fan, a submarine fan in Jefferson. And uh, these uh, sandy fan deposits uh, are very widespread in parts of the Wayne area. And then uh, when the glacier was some distance away, you still had a lot of mud, uh, uh, ground, very finely pulverized uh, clay-sized rock particles, uh, uh, which settled out on the ocean floor. This is in Augusta, on the east side of Augusta, as they were doing the groundwork for the Hannaford store. Uh, and when they were uh, digging out the edges of what would become the parking lot, they cut into this clay bank. And you, see, you can see these layers of clay that formed when uh, Augusta was drowned by the ocean. Sometimes that clay will overlie till or sand and gravel or other older glacial sediments, as it does in the same Hannaford parking lot excavation. 
And as the land rose up and sea level fell, uh, all areas between the upper marine limit and modern sea level were at one time or another washed by the waves uh, as, as, as the ocean fell. And this wave washing process uh, 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 winnowed out uh, a lot of the clay uh, and left behind beach gravels. And actually, you can imagine this as a beach today, just looking at it. It's a, it's a long, flat surface, very gravelly with a lot of boulders in it, except it's now uh, raised up high and dry uh, down in the town of, of Bremen. Bremen. Uh, looking at the LIDAR, uh, you, can, you can see incredible detail uh, all over Maine. This is Route 1 going through the, going uh, east-west uh, across the image uh, in the uh, Waldeboro. And uh, uh, this is Demuth Hill. The road crosses Demuth Hill, goes up over Demuth Hill. And around the hill, you see these beach ridges, these old beach ridges from when the ocean was way up uh, to that elevation where Route 1 is now. And you see a lot of these little moraines no. like we have in Wayne and most other towns around here. And finally, the Desert of Wayne. Uh, the Desert of Wayne, you've all heard of it. Most of you have probably been there or seen some of it. Uh, this picture was taken back in the 70s when uh, a lot more of it uh, uh, was exposed than, than is the case today. It's become more and more vegetated with time. But back in the 70s, uh, this sand pit was, not, was uh, a very nice exposure of the dune sand. And this sand in the Desert of Wayne uh, actually originated as glacial outwash in the Androscoggin River Valley to the west. And then uh, uh, in late glacial time, uh, as the sea fell and things started to dry out, a lot of that outwash sand in the Androscoggin Valley was blown eastward by the prevailing winds up onto the hillsides in Wayne, and sometimes up one side of the hill and down the other. So there's a tremendous amount of the sand uh, in the northwestern part of Wayne and all the way up into the Livermore Falls area. And I, do, I wasn't able to get a LIDAR image, but if you look at this area on LIDAR, you can see the uh, sand dunes very clearly, like you would find in a modern day uh, desert today. Uh, sometimes if you get a good exposure that goes through that windblown sand, you'll get down into whatever is underneath it. So uh, in this case, uh, over around uh, uh, Waterford area, I think it is, you see the, uh, the windblown sand over the till. Now that the sand is extremely permeable and the sand and gravel left by the glacier is extremely permeable. So uh, uh, water flows down very quickly through these loose sandy sediments. So they are not uh, the best places to site uh, a leach field where you don't want the uh, effluent to, you know, to just quickly disperse in the surrounding area. Uh, uh, and if you were to uh, 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 pour a lot of water onto the sand, it would just quickly uh, sink right down until it hit that less permeable till. And then it would, it would tend to flow to some degree. Some of it would sink into the till, but some of it would flow down slope uh, or down gradient along the till surface. So for people that have dug wells, this is a great situation. You could, you could dig a well here, as some people have done in Wayne, uh, up in the desert, uh, and uh, water would, uh, uh, you could, you could uh, tap the water that's caught in the sand and also the water that flows down along the contact between the sand and the till. Uh, uh, so it may work fine for, for a dug well situation, but just too uh, excessively well drained for uh, uh, septic system effluent. So going back to our map, this is my concluding slide. Uh, I'll just leave this on the screen. Uh, if anybody has any questions. I'm sorry I was a little bit discombobulated here. This is the first time I've given this talk. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that we have time for.